Well, hey there, and welcome to the bedroom of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers for July 21st, the day of tragic comic controversy. That's right. And here we have us an illustration or an image rather at the top of this page of a, a darker one humped camel and a lighter toned two humped camel. And uh, what's this? They're chained at the legs. That's right. For one organism, a little tragic comic, I suppose. And maybe we'll find out what all that means, but sometimes we're in context, but just crystallize it for you for a moment there in the event hey is it july 21st and it's your birthday today if it is i just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday and if you come to find this video long or shortly after your birthday has already passed i hope you had a happy birthday but for everyone else who's just joining us uh, here out of curiosity i want to uh, wish you a welcome and hope you enjoy yourself now before we dive in let's roll some dice right this is the die cast birthday cast so we gotta roll us some dice now why roll some dice you may be wondering well for synchronicity's sake that's right and hey what do we got here we got us a one in the crown and a two in the root for you new age chakra folks if you find some way to apply that information uh, one and a two four or three yeah so just you go out into the world and you uh you keep on the lookout for ones twos and threes or any kind of combination thereof who's to say maybe the universe is pushing you one way or the other if you decide to follow those things uh, i'd say synchronicity in so far as uh, what does that mean well it just means you you meditate on those numbers and you go out looking for them and maybe you just follow the path you shake things up a little bit and you might find that it puts you just where you want to be or need to be let's say you you head home right and you roll your numbers and you got to get to work right and you're heading out no, I need that three and uh, one and a two. And you get on the number five train, you get to work, and the address is like five, eight, three. And you're like, man, none of those numbers is lining up with the numbers I rolled. And you go through your day, and everything's just trash. Nothing's working out, right? But then you get home, and you look at the clock, and hey, it's 321. Well, how about that? It sure is early in the morning, but those are your numbers. You know, what does that mean? Who's to say? But it could you could take it to mean that you were doing exactly what you needed to because everything you did between those times you rolled the dice and you got home, it all lined up, didn't it? Sometimes things aren't always jovial, but uh, sometimes you got to work through it. But hey, you take it to what mean what you want. My example is probably trash. I got a better one on July 20th. And I'll put that video up for you if you want to go dive in. It's right at the top of the hour, so uh, you go check it out if you like. But anyway, let's stop horsing around here. Stop cameling around and let's get to your birthday read. Your month is July. Your day is the 21st. Your sign is 27 to 29 degrees Cancer of the Cancer Leo cusp. And your quality and element is cardinal water. July 21st, the day of tragic comic controversy. Excuse me there. Try as they may, those born on July 21 cannot stay out of trouble for very long. Somehow a storm is usually brewing around them, often one with tragic comic overtones. Surprisingly enough, this can be equally true of quiet people born on this day. They seem to get caught up in exciting or unpredictable happenings, not of their own doing. A more flamboyant July 21 person is, of course, more likely to be at least partly responsible for stirring up such excitement. Oppo opposing points of view are the speciality of those born on July 21 and they often present with a biting wit. Not only are they fine debaters, but they serve equally well as mediators, arbitrators, and peacemakers, as their love for playing devil's advocate trains them in seeing both sides of the issue. And since they are well accustomed to conflict, well, they may be right at home in stressful situations that would easily upset others, and those born on this day have a fine sense of humor that usually sees them through. July 21 people may be subject to great mood swings within themselves, yet can remain remarkably calm and unaffected by emotional disturbances in others. Nonetheless, explosive situations do attract them and hold their interest. Performers born on this day love the excitement of appearing in public and are essentially 
exhibitionists. Their performance stance is usually highly physical and robust, yet the more highly evolved person born on this day may ultimately forsake the physical for the spiritual. Less highly evolved July 21 people run the risk of drowning in pleasures of the flesh and along with drink and drugs, losing themselves in escapist activities or highly depressive ruminations. In extreme cases, those born in this day can be thrill-seeking, death-seeking, or even suicidal. Ooh. Excitement of many sorts attracts July 21 people, but particularly excitement that involves some kind of strife. Thus, war or war games, controversy, controversies, rather, investigations, spy stories, detective thrillers, horror films, or thrill rides often have a peculiar fascination for those born on this day. A great danger for July 21 people is that they will allow such excitement to disrupt their lives and the lives of those around them. In very few extreme cases, this can lead to social ostracism, but more often than not makes those born on this day popular in their social circle, since their presence in itself is often a guarantee of an interesting and fun time. July 21 people must, however, beware of disagreeing with too many judgment calls, both by the referees of life and by family or friends, since they may be pegged as lovers of argument and conflict for its own sake. All right, quite the dynamic breakdown there for you, and I've read a few of these, so take it from me. But what did I have to write about all that? Well, let's dive in, shall we? Right to the notes. A troublemaker, a eh? Either quiet or flamboyant. Maybe it's that wit of yours. Nothing bites, nothing that bites, rather, isn't causing trouble. Uh, so maybe just take some of the teeth out of that if you're looking to quell that. But if you're a peacemaker, you probably already figured that out and applied it. Uh, what else did I write here? I think the real danger, if you want to call it that, is in playing devil's advocate in so much as having multiple points of view might could lead to indecision or a lot of fence riding and in my experience a lot of people don't like indecision or you not having an opinion it's just not interesting so uh for you who's that flamboyant open type the life of the party that might not work out too well for you but hey you know some of us got to be conservative and fight that inner urge to uh blow up and uh, just have, be the life of the party if you like but if it's explosive situations that hold your interest especially you thrill seekers or those who drown yourselves in pleasures of the flesh well it sounds to me like someone savvies them on mr or mrs saturday night and hey if that works for you then double down maybe that's what i say but just be weary that you could make some mistakes there. Be willing to accept those mistakes, not that you're not. All right, let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right, we've got those born on the 21st of the month ruled by the number three and by the expansive planet Jupiter. Number three people are often ambitious and even dictatorial. In July 21 people must therefore be careful of their contentious nature being too dominant, emphasized by the sun's rulership of approaching Leo. And through the optimistic influence of Jupiter, too expansive and unrealistic, dreamy aspects here are further underlined by the moon's rulership of Cancer. Those ruled by the number three in general, and July 21 people in particular, may make enemies because they have a tendency to arouse antagonisms in others. Ooh. Well, how about that for a number breakdown? I say it mirrors a lot of what was said previously. What did I write here? Mr. Mrs. Saturday Night and the expansive planet Jupiter. I can buy that if what was said was correct. And that's interesting for your numbers and planets because they seem to conflict just as much as the other stuff that was mentioned does. Uh, so let's see here. You have a penchant for others. Uh, well, no, no, no. Jupiter with its expansive philosophical tones coupled to the moon with its dreamy foundation and feminist energies. It makes sense for a contentious dominant nature. And it's no wonder you're an exciting hodgepodge of possibilities there. 
So like I said previously, I say enjoy it because there are not many of us like that. Most folks, they want nothing to do with that kind of lifestyle. And those that think they do, well, they're just pretending, aren't they? And they actually, they probably can't hang in. They might be like, yeah, I'll come to the party. And you're like, well, let's have a party. And you're ready for like a month long party, right? When they can only hang in for like a day or two. Anyhow, you, I'm sure you're well aware of that if you're that Mr. and Mrs. Saturday night. Uh, what else is there right here? I say, don't be afraid to howl. I'm sure you make the best of any prison cell you might get yourself thrown in. <laughs> because uh, don't do be warned, society in general doesn't placate to the real life of the party. Uh, you know, so be wary. All right, be forewarned. But it, you probably know all this anyhow. So let's dive in with your tarot, one of the more eclectic of the new agey practices. But it's interesting and it's fun, so let's see what they got to say there. The 21st card of the Major Arcana is the world, which depicts a goddess running her energy-giving life rods. Uh, oh, <laughs> let me read this again here. Which depicts a goddess running her energy-giving rods in her hands. Running with her energy giving around her. She surmounts the world and displays the truth, and she has unlimited power. And this card symbolizes all that is attainable on the earthly plane. And though reward and integrity is assured, traditionally, the world can also indicate monumental obstacles and setbacks of fortune, as well as negative traits of distraction and self pity. All right, let's see what I wrote for that. Maybe it's a little bit more coherent there than the actual read. Your tarot. Energy giving rods is right. Just think of what you could do if you got your hands on those. Start a few world wars, no doubt. Uh, and then maybe tear apart the very fabric of society the rest of us enjoy. Only to incite chaos. Uh, at least as far as the less evolved of you tragic comics is concerned. All right, you're supposed to have a sense of humor. I thought you might enjoy that. A little bit of chaos, that's right. Okay, let's dive in with your health. Many July 21 people act as if there is no tomorrow and court danger at every turn. Even the mildest of them have a sense of infallibility concerning their bodies and their health. Accidents, injuries, and insults to bodily systems may simply be accepted as a matter of course. And it will not help to try to preach prevention to those born on this day, for whom such matters can be viewed as a waste of time, and who generally have their own ideas about health care culled from experience or reading. In July 21 people tend to be adventuresome in their diet and love to eat. Obsessive eating and drinking can become a problem for those born on this day who have a propensity for excess in general. And regular exercise regimens are difficult for July 21 people to adopt. Too concerned with pleasures of the flesh is what I wrote down here in the book. <laughs> right on the page there. But what did I write in my notes here? Let's see what we got here for your health. Acting as if there's no tomorrow is admirable if you consider there's no guarantee for as much. The problem is living as if there is no tomorrow as the heighten it heightens the risk of there not actually being one so let's face it there usually is a tomorrow so apply that how you like fun versus productivity i suppose but uh you might have to work monday morning so uh maybe slow down just a hair right as almost there might not be an option right so and you don't want to feel like trash monday morning let's face it Unless you're a masochist, maybe you do, but I can't take a hangover myself. Anyhow, let's dive in to some advice. All right. Try to get a handle on your propensity for risk-taking. Consider opposing arguments and points of view rather than rejecting them out of hand. Strengthen your center and learn how to reach it as well. And as you grow older, make a gradual transition from the physical to the spiritual. That's right. You had your day in the sun. You, you played Mr. Saturday Night for far too long. You need to 
temper things down a little bit. But you could still be fun in your old age if you even made it that long. <laughs> okay. Let's see what I wrote down in the notes for your advice here. Risk aversion. I know it doesn't sound fun, but it may be just what one needs to better ensure a future of indulgence, provided you're able to be happy with keeping them measured. That's right. You don't have to totally abandon it. Just uh, reassess your expectations. Okay, hey, let's dive in with your meditation. Synchronicity is the primary law of the universe. That's right. Synchronicity is the primary law of the universe. I know I started the top of the read uh, touching on synchronicity. I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining it there. And uh, taking into context your whole breakdown, I was a little confused why they might put that in the meditation because it didn't seem like uh, what you call there being much synchronicity in there. But then I referred back to the image of the camels chained together at the foot. And it, it made me get... Uh, it made me reassess that a little bit. So let's see in the notes what I wrote here. First, I couldn't figure this meditation for the reading. Then I considered the chain camels, two different natures as one organism, as I mentioned at the top of the read. And they can get in sync and live their lives, or they can fight each other and go nowhere. Who's to say either one of those options might be exactly what you need, right? But hey, it's a meditation, so you take it for what you want. This isn't my birthday, right? And I'm putting thoughts in your mind. Maybe you got a whole different take. I don't wanna, I don't wanna adjust that for you. So play devil's advocate, right? Okay, hey, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. You're daring, you're exciting, and you're physical. And your weaknesses, you're obsessive, you're self-destructive, and you're argumentative. Ooh, all right. Hey, let's move on to the, some of the people that are born on this day so we can get a little snapshot for the folks who you share company with. All right, we're starting off strong with Ernest Hemingway. He was an American expatriate, short story writer, a newspaper reporter, and the Nobel Prize winning novelist of The Old Man in the Sea. That's just one example. And he lived a fabulous life of adventure, and he committed suicide, as it turns out. Well, that's up for debate, as it turns out also. Uh, who else do we have here? We've got Robin Williams. He was a comedian and TV film actor. And he also died of suicide. But they say it was justified considering uh, all the brain issues he was having from what I read, like Parkinson's or something like that. Foam of dementia. So we want to go out on his own terms. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, we got Don Knotts, the comedian, TV, and film actor. We also have John Lovitz, also a comedian, TV actor of SNL fame. We have Cat Stevens, uh, or Yusef Islam, I think as he changed his name. And uh, he was, if you didn't know, a British singer-songwriter, Cats in the Cradle. And then we also have Gene Fulmore, who was a middleweight boxing champion and fought Sugar Ray Robinson. Okay, what else we got here? Let's take us out, shall we? Your season, well, it's summer. Your sign, once again, is Cancer of the Cancer Leo Cusp. And your quality and elements is Cardinal Water. And this has been the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Yus Elfers for July 21st. The day of tragic comic controversy. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown read. I, I dare say it is unique. It is unique. So don't be dissuaded. You are a special kind of person if any and all this applies. Um, although I'm sure you are a special, interesting person, even if it doesn't. Anyhow, uh, once again, just want to say happy birthday. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you want to dive in even further. Uh, or do your shopping through there to support the channel. I appreciate it. And for everyone else that joined us today, well, I hope you enjoyed yourself and found something interesting. And maybe you want to go meet some July 21st people now, Mr. and Mrs. Saturday Night. You know you need one of them in your life, don't you? All right, once again, your numbers are one and a two. You know synchronicity is important, so head on over to the, the example I gave for yesterday. It was just too long to read for this one. And it's already up, right? So anyhow, once again, happy birthday. And uh, for everyone else that just joined us again... Uh, I want to say come join us for your birthday reading. All right. Take care of yourselves, folks.